أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله everyone I'm gonna make this video I'm gonna make this briefly إن شاء الله uh, no gimmicks no long setup so straight into a a topic which is very close to my heart I try to make videos which are close to my heart which I think they need to be made upon I don't like to just uh, record videos for the sake of it. The topic of this video, and I'm gonna, it's actually a really huge topic, but inshallah bi idnillah, I'm going to try and make a very short version of this. The topic is one to one dawah. One to one dawah. I'm writing a blog on this bi idnillah. It will be published very soon on the dawah motivation WordPress site as a blog. And I may, I may do a, uh, a podcast on this as well, but I wanted to do a video on this to maybe hammer the point home, inshallah, bismillah. So what do I mean by one-to-one -one dawah and why did it come about? Brothers and sisters, I've noticed, I've observed something. This didn't used to be like this. See, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I started to become involved in the dawah, I used to hang around, and maybe it's just me, but I used to hang around with brothers who, wherever they go, whether they're in the town center amongst other brothers, whether they're amongst their families, their cousins, their, their relatives, at a dinner, or if the family come around for dinner, you know, dawat, that kind of thing. Whether they are at a sporting event, whether they, wherever they are, I was around brothers who used to always somewhere engage in one-to-one -one dawah or give nasiya somewhere. If they see a Muslim brother that maybe needs nasiya advice, maybe committing haram, maybe there's something th th that's not right, the brothers would compassionately, with wisdom, with a bit of banter, approach the person randomly and give them amazing nasiha. So this used to happen all the time, subhanAllah. And the, that's one aspect of it. The, uh, the other negative aspect of that, which is still needed in a way, is, see, I live in Crawley. And Crawley has its shops. Every area has its shops. Um, specifically Langley Green. And maybe someone from Crawley will watch this and go, oh, Langley Green. In Langley Green, the shops now, it's full of druggies suppliers and people who take drugs, young kids, Muslims, Pakistanis, and everyone else. It's horrible, it's tragic. And they're just openly doing it without any fear. 25, 30 years ago, if a young Muslim brother or sister, if they were doing something which they shouldn't do, whether it's smoking, whether it's meeting a girl secretly or whatever, or meeting a guy secretly, there was that uncle G factor, that cha cha G, that you know, fear of uncle of being seen. Now I just feel there's no fear of being seen because the uncle G's now they don't see nothing. It's just, yeah, I'm gonna get my shopping, my milk and bread, and walk on. Wow, subhanAllah. So although they 20, 30 years ago, if you were at the shops and you were smoking, a young guy was smoking, uncle would go up to, oh beta, what are you doing? Don't do this, bad habit, stop smoking. I'll tell your parents, I know your parents. You know, in anger, in telling them off, although it's not the best motivation, it's not the way we should be doing things. But at least it was something. At least there was some fear, some, you know, uh, repercussions. Now there's none. Open season. Youngsters, youth, Muslim youth are openly doing this. And that's just cruelly. I'm sure it's the same thing in Bradford, in Birmingham, in Leicester, in all the major cities of the UK and everywhere around the world. The youth, they know that the Uncle G... Even if they see them now, they're just going to move on. They may, give, they may at most get a dirty look. So anyway, look, the point is, we need to revive this one-to-one -one dawah. We need to bring back this one-to-one -one siha. You see, we think that dawah can only be done. When we say dawah, people have different images. When you say the word dawah, and they have a thousand images in their head. One of them which is, okay, I need to put a team together. Yeah? Uh, until I have a team, until there's training, until there's permission, uh, I can't do any dawah. That could be the case. And no doubt, uh, team effort to organize a team, it's 100%. But I say 
that according to Surah Talaq, as we say, Allah SWT says, He will provide for you from mysterious sources. As we know, Islamic principles tells us that Allah will open up ways for us, as He has done in history for, for the Muslim Ummah. We just need to take a step. As the, the hadith says, you take a, uh, you go towards Allah and Allah will run towards you. Subhan. I'm just paraphrasing the hadith. We need to do something ourselves. We can't just wait until uh, some miracle happens and then you do da'wah. And I think one of the ways to get a team together, to get your, to get your da'wah going in your town or city, to open up ways and permission and everything else, one of the ways is to engage in one-to-one -one da'wah, is to do what you can. The human being is capable of a lot of things. When it comes to um, finding work or preparing for exams or uh, preparing for a wedding or when it comes to anything dunya related, when it comes to the dunya, we will blow our brains. We will think and think and do absolutely deep thinking of how to deal with these issues. But when it comes to da'wah, we just want to hope for the best or we just want to make wait for like some sort of miracle. No, we need to create conditions for the miracles to happen. And that's one-to-one -one da'wah. So let me go and, and discuss it, inshallah. So uh, there's a really nice quote, a very interesting quote. One good conversation can shift the direction of change forever. And that was by Linda Lambert. And a beautiful hadith in Bukhari Muslim. Uh, the Prophet said, the religion is nasiha, ad dinu nasiha. The people asked, to whom? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, to Allah and to his book and to his messenger and to the leaders of the Muslims and the common folk. This for me, it, it means you sh we should be giving nasiha at all times and everywhere and to anyone, including ourselves. We should be giving nasiha to ourselves, of course. So the need for one-to-one -one interaction. So, like I said, when I say, you know, I have this habit, alhamdulillah, this habit, which I've used, which I've employed as a tool on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on my Twitter, anywhere where I have any interaction with another Muslim, I always ask this, now it's by now a classic question, which everybody knows that I've asked them at some point in their life. And that's, how's the dawah? How's it going, bro? How's the dawah? Now, I get a myriad of answers. I get all sorts of answers. The answers are usually like this. Oh, Nadeem Bhai, I'm sharing posts daily on FB. Okay. Um, or my Insta stories, they go out twice a day. And I'm sharing a, a something to do with Islam and inspiration. Okay. Oh, my university, my ISOC at my university, they're planning new things very soon. Or, yes, we are organizing a lecture at our institute very soon, inshallah, make dua. Um, or, it's, you know, remember these are answers I get to my question, how's it out? Or, I, I debated for about three hours online with a Christian about Bible texts. Or, Yes, the other day I saw someone, I said, I told them that this is haram. That's the usually, and then others, that's the kind of answers I get. SubhanAllah, with all due respect, may Allah reward you for that, first of all. May Allah reward the person doing all that, university, ISOC, organizing a lecture, everything. But what we want to do to change the world, for us to emulate the sunnah, to make an impact around our sphere of influence, we need to add this very important tool and armor to our work. Very useful. And that is one-to-one -one dawa, or you can call it one-to-one -one nasiha. So I mentioned the uncle G factor that's missing. I mean, I crave that. Where are those uncles gone? I've become an uncle now. Maybe I, I should do that more and more. But like I said, this whole video is nasiha to myself and others. Um, see, what's happening in Pakistan, in the UK, is a lot of us who are talented, who can speak, who are brave, who are confident, we are using all our talents towards the dunya, our own business, our own work, studies, family. But when it comes to dawah, we leave it to other people. And what we're doing, with these talented, articulate, confident brothers and sisters in Pakistan, around the world, and the reason why I keep saying Pakistan, because most, a lot of people will watch this from Pakistan, is don't just become a ticket seller. Don't just become a promoter of events. SubhanAllah, we've become, every single brother and sister, 
if you look on social media, we have become uh, ads. That's what we are. We're just ads. Event or <clears throat> event is taking place, share the poster. Halakha taking place, share the poster. Share, share, share. Our events, we need tickets, sell the tickets. Another event, sell the tickets. I've sold this ticket. I've sold that ticket. How many tickets have you sold? Do that. I'm not saying stop that. Do that. But that's not the real dawah. The real dawah is you engage in dawah. When, let's say you, you, you sold a lot of tickets or an event. And these people have come. And let's say you've managed to um, aim for non-practicing people, which is another, another topic in itself. But let's say a lot of non-practicing people came to this event, which you promoted and you sold a lot of tickets to. It's at the event. Now your job is ushering or setting up the desks or you know, bringing people in or setting up the stage or whatever. Brothers and sisters, be a bit more than that. What do I mean by that? If you're in the hall and you've seen a non-practicing brother or sister, why do you not engage with them? Why don't you approach them at the break or after the event? Approach them and have a one-to-one -one conversation with them. Uh, this is not happening. The event is taking place. A lot of non-practicing people come, they listen and they go away and that's it. Maybe you'll capture their details on form. They need more than that. They came for inspiration. Maybe they didn't get it from the lecture. Maybe it went over their head, especially if you're complete non-practicing you rarely get it the first time, very rarely. You need follow up. You need continuous motivation, inspiration. That will only happen if you approach these people now and, and have a great chat. And you can start with something like, how was it? Yeah. So I know brothers, mashallah, who I've hung around with, they give dawah all the time. When, it come, when it's restaurants, they give dawah there. When it's, for example, um, taxi drivers, Uber cream drivers, you give down to them. When it comes to, for example, um, you know, amongst family in the park, you're playing cricket, wherever you see a human being, engage or try to engage or create an opportunity for one-to-one -one dawah. It's very important, subhanAllah. You know, if you have this habit, inshallah, and then you die, have the vision that when after you die, people remember you as the one who used to give nasiha all the time, who used to give amazing advice all the time. He used to always fearlessly approach people and tell them, don't do this or do this, but in a very profound, very um, thought-provoking manner, mashallah. So I'm saying that wherever you can, in the back of your mind, wherever you are, wherever there's a human being in front of you, at the back of your mind, think, okay, can I give this person that one? Maybe I need a game plan. And by the way, I might do another blog or video on this whole thing, game plan which is a kind of initiation, inshallah. So, and there'll be times when you can't give dawah. You're just on a bus, and you'll be sitting, sitting next to someone for just literally two minutes. Assalamu alaikum, how are you, Tita? Maybe you can't. I mean, experienced du'at can. You know, the one thing I've always said when it comes to street dawah, or any kind of dawah, the best training is not, are not these videos and blogs and whatever, they help. It's you to get involved in it. You get involved, you try, you open your mouth, you talk, you communicate, you will make mistakes, but don't fear the mistakes. Go back to the drawing board and start again. So always be on a, um, on a, uh, a mindset of always looking, how can I give this person gawa? Can I give this person gawa? Can I, can I say something here? Maybe I can share something. Always, if every single human being, every single practicing brother and sister starts thinking like this, that I'm gonna give dawah everywhere, not just at an event, not just in the masjid or madrasa or my institute, everywhere I go. Imagine every single brother and sister in Pakistan, they give amazing nasiya to their spheres of influence, one-to-one, -one, by themselves, over coffee, in the house. I think we can see a lot of change, inshallah. That's change, that's real change. Events, workshops, yes, they have their place. But you, the person, your example, your sincerity should shine and you should start. The, look, look at it this way, look at the mindset. People are waiting for you to give the dawah. The people who are non-practicing, they are waiting for you. The hijabi, the niqabi, the brother with the beard, the thawb and the shawakimis. The, those, those people who are not practicing, they are waiting for you to open your mouth and approach them. They are waiting. Yes, they are waiting. They're waiting for you to be approached. And Allah SWT is waiting, is testing you. He's waiting. When is my slave going to call to me? Call to Allah. 
So these are just some points, inshallah. It's a quick video. I, I hope uh, I've articulated the importance of one-to-one da'wah. -one the blog will be coming out, inshallah. Please I'll read, I'll share it in the link below. Um, if you watch this, a like is good, but that's no point. I like to interact, leave a comment, feedback, anything you're not sure of. I'm sure I speak very fast sometimes. So if there's nothing, something you're unsure of, please ask me and we can verify. Jazakallah for listening. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu la ilaha anta wa astaghfiruka wa tuba alaykum. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullah.